All right, welcome. Uh, in this video, we're going to be um, looking at um, the motion, describing the motion of an object that's moving in a straight line. And so we're just going to um, talk about each one of these topics, distance, position, displacement, average speed, average velocity, instantaneous speed, instantaneous velocity, average acceleration, and instantaneous acceleration. So uh, before we do that, let's just clarify that um, kinematics, you usually study kinematics before you study dynamics. And so kinematics is the study of describing an object's motion. And then dynamics is the study of um, the causes of an object's motion. So dynamics would be like uh, Newton's laws and that, where kinematics is what um, you're studying if you're just talking about accelerations and and positions and velocities of an object. So it turns out that these are the terms that we um, that are extremely useful this, to describe an object moving in straight line motion. If we can um, if we can figure out the position, the the displacement, the velocity, the acceleration of an object, then we have a pretty good idea of what's happening with that object's motion. All right, so um, let's take a, a look at how this all works out. So um, let's say that we have um, a, a number line. Uh, let's say that there's a, a number line that has um, negative 20 meters, negative 10 meters, 0 meters, all the way to 70 meters. And um, let's say an object starts at 10 meters. So it's going to start at 10 meters, and it's going to move all the way to, say, um, 30 meters. Goes all the way to 30 meters, and then when it gets there, it comes back and goes to um, all the way to 0 meters. So it ends up at 0 meters. Okay? So it starts at 10, goes to 30, and then um, comes all the way back to 0 meters. And um, let's say it does that in 10 seconds. So the time it takes to do that whole trip is 10 seconds. All right, so um, so what about the distance? What, well, how far did it go? Okay, that, that's what distance is, how far it went. So let's see, it went 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 meters. So the distance that, the, that this object went is 50 meters, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Yeah, so the distance is 50 meters. Okay, now let's talk about what position is. So position is just the location of an object. So um, it started out, its position was 10 meters. So that's its initial position. So sometimes people will call that x of x naught, x sub zero, um, or x of i for x initial. But that's um, 10 meters. That's the 10 meter position. Okay, the final position is, um, is there the zero meter position. Okay, so that's what we mean by position. The position is just the location at any point along the way. Okay, and then um, there's something called displacement. And displacement's just the change in position. So the change in position is the displacement. This is the displacement there. And the change in position is just what you think it is. It's um, x final minus x initial. So um, to figure that out, I could um, say the final is 0 meters. And the initial is uh, was 10 meters. So when I do the math there, the delta x is um, negative 10 meters. Oh, so displacement can be negative, and in this case it is negative. Now the way you can interpret that is that from the time I began to the time I ended, I was displaced negative 10 meters, or in other words, 10 meters to the left. So I was displaced this way to the left. So displacement is going to be a vector quantity, whereas distance is a, a scalar quantity. Vector meaning it, its direction matters. It has a direction, not just a magnitude, but a direction. Okay, so um, the displacement here is negative 10 meters. Okay, so let's talk about average speed. So average speed is um, going to just be the distance 
the object travels divided by the time it took to travel that distance. So the average speed is, is uh, I don't know what your teacher is going to designate that as, but I'm just calling it S for speed and then um, sub AV for average. Okay, there's other ways to designate that, but um, let's just say that it, that's um, average speed. It's the distance that the thing that the object went divided by the time it took to go this distance. So it's not just any time; it's the time it took to go this distance. So if we look at um, our example, this thing went 50 meters in 10 seconds. So the average speed is 50 meters for our example in 10 seconds. And so that's um, 5 meters per second. So on average it was going 5 meters every second. Every second that went by it went another 5 meters. Okay, now average velocity though is not the distance it went divided by time, but it's the displacement that it had divided by time. So let's figure that one out. So remember the displacement was um, a negative 10 meters. And so it went negative 10 meters in um, 10 seconds. So it had an average velocity of negative 1 meters per second. One way to interpret that is if if you wanted to start where we started at the 10 meter position and make it all the way to the 0 meter position in 10 seconds then you would need to be walking to the left, negative, negative meaning to the left, at um, one meter per second and in if you went to the left at one meter per second um, then um, you would get there in 10 seconds okay so um, average velocity is also a vector quantity so this is a vector quantity sometimes we'll put a little vector sign over that whereas av average speed is is a um, is going to be a scalar quantity meaning it doesn't have direction Average speed is always going to be a positive value, whereas average velo velocity can be a positive or negative value. Average speed, yeah, so there you have it. Okay, so then um, let's talk next about um, instantaneous speed. So instantaneous speed is the speed that an object has, like what if this object was moving, like, like we'd want to know, like what was its speed like right there at that instant in time? What is this speed at that instant in time? Or like at this, at that, right at that time when it was right there, how fast was it going? So that's a little tricky because um, how do you measure that? Well, what you would do is you would, um, to get the speed, you could get an approximate speed by taking... Um, a tiny distance that it was traveling when it was going through there and divide it by a tiny time that it traveled in that distance. So, um, for instance, um, let's say that you're um, heading underneath an underpass in a car on a highway. If you knew the, the width of the underpass and how long it took to go um, underneath the underpass, that would give you an average speed. But if but it's pretty close to the instantaneous speed because um, instantaneous speed then is going to be the distance divided by the time. But a very if you make the distance a very very small distance, like a centimeter then the thing that's moving a centimeter will go in a very, very, very small time. Probably. And, um, I mean, if it's going a normal speed, if it's, if it's not inching along like an inchworm, but a, like a, a car, let's say, you get a very, very small distance divided by a very, very small time, and then that will give you an average speed. Your speedometer on your car gives you your average, your, your average speed. Um, excuse me, it gives you your instantaneous speed. Okay, so then um, how do you get the instantaneous velocity? It's the same thing. So um, what we do is we say it's the instantaneous velocity is the limit as um, of delta x over delta t as delta t approaches zero. So you don't let it move hardly for hardly any time. Like you let it move for just like a, 
um, a millionth of a second and then you measure that distance and that's pretty close to the instantaneous velocity. But if you let the delta t go to zero, then it is the instantaneous velocity. We have another way of designating this. So this is kind of awkward to write. So this is another way of writing the exact same thing, and that is that we say it's a very tiny dis displacement divided by a very tiny time. So these are called differentials, dx over dt. So it's the derivative of x with respect to time, and that's the instantaneous velocity. We'll talk more about that um, when we get into some of the calculus. All right, um, so then let's talk about average, excel average acceleration. So right now we are right here. With it, that was instantaneous velocity, and let's talk about average acceleration. Okay, so um, if an object's changing its velocity, then we say it's accelerating. So how the rate at which it, an object changes its velocity um, is going to be the acceleration. And so um, if you're trying to find the average acceleration, just take its change in velocity, the object's change in velocity, divided by the time it took to change that velocity. That delta t, that's the time it takes to change the velocity. So what this means then is, uh, first of all, the units are going to be... Um, the units for delta V are meters per second, and then um, the units for delta T are seconds. It's, and so um, this is the same thing then as uh, meters per second times one over seconds, or meters per second squared. Um, a car that's going with a constant acceleration of four meters per second squared if that's its if it's going constantly at four accelerating at four meters per second squared, it's changing its velocity by four meters per second with every passing second. So one of the things that makes average acceleration a little tricky is that um, acceleration is a rate of a rate. Since velocity is the rate at which displacement changes with time, then when you're taking the the rate at which velocity changes with time, it's kind of a rate of a rate. Okay, so let's take a look, a closer look at what what the four meters per second means then, for, uh, an acceleration of four meters per second squared means. So it's going to change its velocity four meters per second every passing second. So let's have it start at zero and see how it's going zero. But it's accelerating, so in one second it'll be going four meters per second. In two seconds, it will be another, an additional four meters per second. And so now it's eight meters per second. In three seconds, add another four meters per second, so 12 meters per second. And for four seconds, um, then you'll be at 16 meters per second. So there you go. That's what we mean by average acceleration. It's just the rate at which um, velocity changes with time. All right, um, lastly, instantaneous acceleration. Um, is going to be, um, it's going to be the limit as the velocity, as the delta t changes, as the velocity goes to zero. So let's take a look. So the instantaneous acceleration, we'll get into this um, when we get into calculus, but we'll just say that if average acceleration is this, then instantaneous acceleration the instantaneous acceleration at any given instant of time, it's just going to be the limit as delta t goes to zero of um, delta v over delta t. So you don't, if you're trying to measure it, you'd only let it change for a very tiny amount of time and you get the, the very tiny amount of change in velocity and that should give you your instantaneous acceleration. Again, we can abbreviate this with, it's just dv dt. It's the derivative of v with respect to t. More on that when we, when we discuss um, the calculus. All right, thanks. Talk to you.